Welcome to the Health, Habits, and Epic Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry Price. The goal of this podcast is to educate and enable empowered women to take the next step towards achieving their health, wellness, and lifestyle goals. Let's get started. Well, hello, my beautiful epic friend. I hope you are doing great. In today's episode, I would like to talk about the five levels of commitment. And the reason I want to talk about this at this time is because we've started a new year in a new you. And generally, by the time the late January, early February timeframe comes around, many people have given up on what they committed to for the new year. And I want to help you really commit to the goals, particularly the health goals, the habits that you want to create in your life. I really want you to commit to that long term. And so I want to go over these five levels of commitment because I believe that they can help you when you're identifying what is my level of commitment, where am I at now compared to the beginning of the year. And then I want to give you strategies on how to increase your level of commitment at the end of this podcast. So let's dive in and break down those five levels of commitment. So level one is called lack of commitment, right? So this is actually like, I even call this like ground zero. You have no commitment to change. You don't want to change. This can be considered a denial phase for people who overeat or overdrink. They just don't want to change. They don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I have no desire to change. So This level is characterized by strong resistance to change. They don't want to do it. They might think it's too hard. They might think I've tried so many times and I failed. Nothing's going to work. Don't bother me about this. I don't want to talk about this. And so they get pretty adamant and use statements that they really don't want to change or do anything else. And they may even come at it from the 180 degrees, like, leave me alone, I like my drinking. Leave me alone, I like my smoking habit. Leave me alone, I'm not willing to change. I like overeating. And deep down, that's coming from anger or resentment, and not really their true desire to keep smoking or their true desire to keep drinking or overeating. And so I consider this like a phase where you might just be in denial, you might be putting up a smoke screen, you might just not want to tap into wanting to change. There are times in our life where we get hardened and things just seem so difficult and like nothing's going to change. And so we just give up. Now, as I'm going through these levels of commitment, I want you to know that I have non-judgment for any of these areas, meaning I've found myself not wanting to change. I found myself at this level at a phase in my life, and I know this phase will come back. So it's not to say that we're always going to live at one level. I just want us to recognize where we're at because my philosophy is always meet yourself where you're at. And we have to honor that version of where we are at. We have to honor it so that we can soften it. And when we soften that heart and heart, when we soften that denial, when we soften where we're at, maybe then the brain is safe to feel, hmm, maybe change is possible. Maybe I can ascend to the next level. Maybe I am willing to do a small piece, right? Then we can get movement. So none of this that I'm saying is like, I've never been there. I don't understand. You should always be at this level. There's no shoulds. We work in stages and seasons through our life. And I think the best thing we can do as humans is to honor that in ourselves and to honor that in others. And so that is level one, a lack of commitment, the denial level, just not willing to change. So then let's move on to level two. Level two is what's called outcome without effort. So we want the outcome. We want the goal. We want to lose that 20 pounds. We want to become a different drinker. We want to decrease our relationship with alcohol, but we want to do it without effort. And so at this level, you will find that you may be full of hope, wish, fantasizing about one day when, one day when I lose weight one day when I get in shape, one day when my health takes the most priority in my life, one day when I'm able to kick this drinking habit, one day when I wish I could, or I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. That could look like I want to walk up two flights of steps without being winded, right? I want to expand my lung capacity. I want to expand my VO2 max. I want to expand my longevity and my health span. 
I often hear women tell me I want to drink less. I just don't know how to get there. And so there's a flicker of hope. And that is so much better than level one, where there is no hope. They are actually hopeless at level one. So level two, we have something to work with, right? We have something to work with at every stage, but level two, having that hope, really we can tap into that desire to want to change and then create small actions and get them to level three. So level two, I consider this the wishful stage, the I'm thinking about it, but the primary component of level two is you have want without action. So this stage is really characterized by no action that's taken by the individual to change, no action to go after that result or that goal. And for me, when I'm coaching clients, I really like to dive into, okay, why aren't you taking the action? Let's really look at that because a lot of times it's excuses. I don't have enough time. I don't know how to do it. And sometimes it's just stories that we keep telling ourselves that we may not even recognize. They're subconscious and we aren't even aware of them until somebody asks us pointed questions, right? Like, I don't think I can achieve it because I've tried 20 times and I keep failing, right? So if you have this subconscious thought that you're not even in tune with, you don't even know it's there until somebody poses a question to you, you may not realize that that is what you have to overcome. Taking the action may or may not be difficult, but it becomes more difficult if you got a limiting belief in the way. Personally, I love working with people in the level two phase because I know they want something and we just have to fuel and fan that fire. When we do, we can really see a person catapult out of, I'm kind of stuck, I really don't want to be stuck, but that we can get some progress for them. So I think level two is not a bad place to be. You just have to know how to work with yourself or find somebody who can work with you so you can move out of level two and into level three. So again, level two is you want it, but you're not willing to work for it. You're not changing your actions. And to be completely transparent, I find that in one of my goals for this year, I am stuck in level two commitment. So I am working with myself, and I'll tell you some of the strategies at the end of this podcast where I'm working with myself to move more into level three and level four commitment. So again, I just want to emphasize none of these levels are good or bad. We just want to recognize where we're at. And when we can recognize and meet ourselves where we're at, and we know what it takes to get to the next stage, boom, that's where the magic can happen. And here's also what I want to propose is that sometimes you have to think about it for a little bit before you actually do move into action. And you'll see this a lot around the holidays or people talking about New Year's resolutions, right? They're like, oh, I'm doing this, but I can't wait till the new year because I'm going to do this. So they're at that level two where they're wanting the outcome, they're wishing for the outcome, and they're waiting for a certain period of time to elapse till they feel that they will take the action or until they feel that they will move into the action. Okay. So now we move into level three, where people are taking action. And level three phase of commitment is called the trying phase. And so what makes this level different than the other two is someone is actually taking action in this phase. So they're willing to do something. They're willing to try new things. They're willing to sign up for new things. They begin taking steps, whether they're small or big, but they begin taking steps towards the outcome they want. Now, this is a wonderful phase, right? It's progress from level one. It's progress from level two. However, there are some downsides in this phase, which we'll talk about. And so it's great to try. I want to emphasize the good points of this phase. You're taking action. You are doing things that will make a difference. And you'll often hear in your words, you'll say, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to change my drinking. I'm trying this. I'm trying that. And I'll see what happens. Sometimes I hear, well, maybe it will work. I'm trying this and maybe it will work. So sometimes I hear trying in the words of my clients, and then I hear also a maybe in that sentence. And so generally, people who are trying and maybe something will work, right? They have a level of commitment that's considered weak. It's not on fire. It's not turned up to the degree of 10. It's kind of like at a low simmer. And consequently, then people are dabblers in this phase where they're trying this, trying that. But they never really get to a place where it becomes a habit and where they begin to master the process to get to the result. 
So maybe I'll go to the gym a few times. I'm going to try the gym. I'm going to sign up for a membership, right? They go a few times. And since their commitment level is on the weaker end, they give up quickly. They give up quickly in the face of difficulty. And that's really the defining characteristic of this trying phase is that they get little or paltry results because they find that they are in that start stop. They start, they try a few times, and then they stop. They go a few days being alcohol free, and then they turn on the faucet and go all in again. They go a couple of days to the gym or get in a couple of workouts or a couple of walks or a couple of sessions of strength training, and then boom, they stop. And then they start again, and then they stop. So that's a weak level of commitment. That's the trying phase. Again, no judgment. It's just if you're at that level of commitment, it's good to know what to expect and then how to work with yourself to get to the next phase if that's what you desire. Maybe the trying phase is okay for the goal that you're wanting to pursue. Or maybe you're just in the trying phase as you figure things out. Maybe you're trying this program, maybe you're trying this way, and what you're going to do in a couple of weeks is assess which one is moving the needle the most. So there is value to the trying phase. I just find that when people stay in the trying phase, particularly when it's a goal that they really, really want, and they're starting and they're stopping and they're starting and they're stopping, that this can be a very frustrating place to stay. If you're constantly trying to change your relationship with alcohol and you've been at it for years and years and years, right? I have. And then I had to find something that was really going to move the needle. I see women do this with their weight. I see women do this with trying to get in shape, right? They keep trying things, trying, 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 and they get some progress, but then they put the weight back on. And then they get some progress and put the weight back on, right? They're constantly trying things. And trying is good because they're getting progress and that feels amazing, but really analyzing, well, what is sabotaging? Where do I not take it to the next level? And how do I get to the next level? And I think that kind of personal insight is very important. And I call it personal insight because the insight I might have to my life and how my brain works and how I run my life might not be valuable to somebody else, right? We are all unique. We are all individual. So we have to really tune in to how our brains and our bodies work so that we can learn from ourselves. We're a student of ourselves. And when we can find what really gets our commitment level there to what we really want in our life, particularly if it's around health and healthy habits, then that's worth investigating and really studying. Okay, so that's level three, the trying phase. Now let's move on to level four. And this phase is characterized as I'm doing my best. And what I love about somebody at the level four phase is that they are really on fire. They are really heating things up. They are going after their goal. And how you know if you're at level phase, you are taking consistent action. And you are taking consistent action no matter what. So we are doing the dry January challenge inside of my private Facebook group called Stop the Overdrinking Habit. And so if you notice that you are going dry during the week and on the weekends, no matter what, right, you are taking consistent action day after day after day. And so if you're in that level four of commitment, right, you are facing your challenges head on. You are stepping up to the challenge. You are facing life. You are facing the challenges. Somebody invites you out to dinner. You go out to dinner. The whole party and group that you went out with, they're all drinking, but you are not because you decided I'm going to commit to this and I'm coming at it at a level four. So it doesn't matter what you do. I'm staying in my own lane and I'm not drinking. Okay, so now this phase comes with an added bonus. (laughs) I call it an added bonus. So this is not part of the research, but I added this part in because I notice when people are at that level four commitment, you know what happens? They don't only get the benefit of being that committed. They also get the benefit of rapid progress, which feels so good. And when it feels so good and you're getting rapid progress, you know what happens? You gain momentum. You don't have momentum at the trying phase at level three, but you gain the added benefit when you're at level four of momentum. Your results begin to compound. You start going to the gym, you start losing a few pounds, you feel really good about that, it keeps you motivated, and you get momentum that you want to keep on going. 
So level four commitment has that added benefit. It has that added feature. It's like buying a car, right? Do you want the basics or do you want to upgrade? (laughs) Like level four commitment is terribly an upgrade to your physiology, your biology, how you feel and how you show up. Because you know yourself, you are ready to do what it takes to get it done. Okay, so you might be scratching your head and going, hmm, that's level four? You mean there's another level? There's five levels, you said. And it's true. Level four commitment might seem like you're at the top level. However, I will tell you that commitment at level four still leaves the door open for giving up. It's open just a jar, but it's still open. Because remember, this phase is called I'm doing my best. And so doing my best, we are still getting the results that we want. However, we are not opening our mind to say, oh, maybe there's more in the jar for me to accomplish. Maybe there's more in this goal for me to accomplish. Not only that, what I also see if somebody sets out to get a goal at commitment level four, and they reach 90% of it, maybe even a little less or a little bit more, like 95%, and they say that this is good enough. So let me just make up an example. I want to be a woman who loses 20 pounds, and they lose 18 pounds, and they're like, this is good enough. Or I want to be a woman who just has two drinks a week because I want to optimize my health and maybe some weeks not even drink at all. But then they get to like four drinks a week or six drinks a week. And they're like, ah, this is good enough. This is still in that moderate category of drinking. So I'm a moderate drinker. That's good enough. If I lower it to two a week, I'm still a moderate drinker. That's good enough. And so we begin to settle when we think we're doing just our best. And notice it's our thinking that says, oh, this is the best we can reach. This is the best we can get. So we're actually leaving something on the table. So that's what starts to differentiate level four from level five. And level five is known as commitment level at whatever it takes. So this is commitment to your results, the 20 pounds, the two drinks a week, whatever the goal is that you have, you're going to get it no matter what, period, mic drop. It's as good as done. And this level of commitment is incredibly powerful. It's so powerful because it really rejects any thought from entering your mind that you won't get it. Meaning there is no exit ramp. You are on this trajectory and you are going to reach it no matter what. You burn the boats. That's another cliche to burn the boats. There is no going back. You are going to get this goal no matter what what. And here's the thing that I think people misunderstand about level five commitment. And that is they think when they start and they have level five commitment that they should have the entire process from A to Z to get to that goal completely figured out. And that is not true, my friends. If you look at people who have level five commitment They do not know the entire process. All they know is the next step or the next two steps that they need to take. That's it. But they are committed to figuring the rest out. They will hire a trainer. They will look at programs. They will Google it online. They will figure it out on how to get it done. So they know obstacles are going to happen and they actually expect them to appear. They know that their brain may not want to do something, but they're going to do it no matter what. And when you get to this level of commitment, I will tell you how you know you're there. You may have this happen at level four, but it really happens at level five commitment. When you are committed to getting your goal, you let nothing stand in your way. Nothing. No one, no person, no thing not your job, not your kids, not your husband. Nothing stands in your way. You don't care about pleasing others. It's not that you're rude to people. It's just like, hey, you're going to order dessert. I decided I'm losing weight. I'm cutting back on sugar. I'm not ordering dessert. It's not about the dessert. It's not about you. It's about me and what I want and what I want to achieve. And so you're on a mission to achieve this result. 
And you're not on a mission in an angry way. You're on a mission in like, I'm finally going to get it. You are like so proud of yourself. You are like feeling it in your bones that this is going to happen and you are going to step into that version of you. I've seen this with some of my private clients when we work on increasing their level of commitment and we allow them to really experience what level five commitment feels like in their body. They are on fire and not just for the day. I mean, they are on fire for weeks. Because now we tap into this powerful source that goes even beyond our brain and it just takes over our body. And that's where I see breakthroughs happen. That's where I see massive transformations happen in such a short period of time. If you could get to level five, I will tell you it's glorious. And when you experience level five commitment, it feels amazing in your body. I recently experienced this in my body. Last year in 2023, I was so committed to helping women really shape up. I've been helping women for so long with drinking, and then they want more, right? They drink less. They still want greater health. They want to improve their physique. They want to improve their body composition. And a lot of times I'll hear, I'm too old. I shouldn't want this. This is vain, blah, blah, blah. And I'm so sick of these weak excuses that we continue to put out there and think that that's okay to say, right? When men want to get in shape, it doesn't matter their age. They just go and do it. And there's no man telling another man, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you're too old. Oh, just have cookies with me. Like, it's just not in the bro community, right? They're there cheering each other on. And when I see women talk to other women in the circles that I hang out with or I've been exposed to, I'm like, ick. We've got to stop this. If women want to be strong and healthy and vibrant, let's get them there. And I created that Tone in 10 program on fire, full of commitment. And I got that program done in such a short period of time with the amount of content that is in that program. It is insane what I was able to create because I was on fire with level five commitment, because I want to change the narrative for aging women that they have to be old or frumpy or deal with weight gain as a normal sign of aging. It is not. There are many communities out in the world that women don't gain tremendous amount of weight as they age. And so I love this whatever it takes kind of commitment level because it feels amazing in your body. And you feel that you are on mission to change a narrative for yourself or for others. And so I've explained these five levels of commitment. All of them, you will find yourself in a place. That's not good. That's not bad. I really want to emphasize that point. But really, it's like, okay, if I'm here and I don't desire to be at this level anymore, what can I do to take me to the next level? And I love the quote, nothing happens until after you commit by Dan Sullivan. Really think about that. Nothing happens. No action is taken until you decide to commit, right? So nothing happens until after you commit to something. And I think that's why New Year's resolutions feel so good because we commit to something. And when we commit and we have that commitment, there's an energy in our body that feels good because we're like, yes, I want that goal. And we know humans are designed to have goals. Our caveman people, predecessors, right? They had the goal of staying alive. They had the goal of procreating. They had a goal of go find food. Let's not die. Humans are goal-oriented people. And so we want to honor that process. And so now let's dive into strategies where you can increase your level of commitment. So I'm going to talk about a few. I go into so many more inside of Epic U. I go into so many more when I'm working with clients, but here's a few to get you started. One I want to talk about is called a forcing function. I've learned this term from Benjamin Hardy. He's amazing. He's an organizational psychologist. He's written great books, and he's taught me the concept of a forcing function. And if you look at forcing functions, it's any task or any activity or any event that you take that forces you into action. And it forces you into action to produce a specific result. So that's called a forcing function. There are many types of forcing functions you can do. You can set a deadline for yourself. Setting a deadline for yourself, I'm going to learn to run a 5k by April. 
I'm going to sign up for that half marathon in June because it's going to help me start running today. I'm going to sign up for a program so I can learn skills on how to become X, Y, and Z, or sign up for a program to drink less, or sign up for a program to learn how to lose weight, right? So that's a forcing function. You're taking an activity or a task or an event that's forcing you to take action. I do this all the time. I sign up for programs that where I want to learn. Right now, I'm signed up for a hormone course because hormones are fascinating, particularly as I go through perimenopause and into menopause, and I really want to understand my body and what's going on because this wasn't taught to me in pharmacy school. And so by signing up for this course, I'm forcing myself. It's a forcing function where I'm going to learn about hormones. I have a whole workbook to follow. I love learning. I'm a lifelong learner. I constantly want to grow and educate myself. And yes, the benefit is for me, but also the benefit is when I could talk about it and share it with others because menopause is something that we have not talked enough about as a society. I was just meeting with my small group and talking about all the changes that happens in the body, how we get weepy, how we get depressed, how we start thinking, oh my gosh, what is my purpose and what is my role in life? I used to think it was my kids and my job, and now I'm not feeling so fulfilled by that. And some women can't sleep, and some women have hot flashes, and some women start having sex and it feels like sandpaper. And then we think, oh, this is just supposed to happen as we age. And it is not. It's a hormonal dysregulation that happens. And so having this forcing function, right, encourages me to get the goal that I want. I want to be extremely knowledgeable in this area. I want to help other women in this area because I could talk about sex. I could talk about your body in a very non-judgmental, safe way. And when I start talking about my experiences and talking about it this way, I see women just break down and be like so vulnerable with me where I can actually help them with the problems that they are feeling in life and that they feel their doctor doesn't understand or their friends, they just don't feel comfortable bringing it to their friends. That's forcing function. I highly encourage you to use that to leverage your commitment to something. Another strategy that's very useful, that's talked about a lot, And it doesn't go for all goals, but depending on the goal that you do have is the strategy of breaking it down into smaller chunks, right? Eating the elephant one bite at a time. It may be very daunting to think about your goal, right? Maybe some of you have a goal of losing a significant amount of weight and that just feels like you're never going to get there. It's going to take months and months on end. So why even start? And so if it's this big goal that you have, a great strategy to increase your commitment level is saying, okay, how can I break this down into milestones? How can I break this down into small chunks that I can conquer each week? That's going to keep me committed. That's going to keep me showing up doing the work. That's going to move me from ah, just dabbling and in that trying level three phase to no, I'm doing my best. I'm going to level four because I'm breaking it down into these small chunks. Or I've seen small chunks really work to get somebody on fire. They're like, wow, I didn't see how I can lose 50 pounds that way. Or I didn't understand how I can do it. Just the goal seemed too big. And when you break it down into those smaller chunks, now I'm on fire. Now I am all in no matter what. I know I'm going to achieve it because now I could see the process to get there. Will there be tweaks along the way to that process? 100%. Absolutely. Will there be obstacles along the way in the process? 100%, absolutely. Life will throw us curveballs. But it's how you pivot and manage those curveballs. It's how you are able to come back to yourself and commit to your highest priority and your highest goals, even when life may detract you here and there. And then the last strategy I want to talk about is to increase your desire. I have an entire course, actually I have a few courses on this inside of Epic U, and I work on this a lot with my private clients because I find this strategy to be so effective, particularly for women. Why? Because a lot of times in society, we get the opposite story. I can't think of the right word I want to use, but we get the opposite told to us. We get told that if we want to lose weight, oh, it's all vanity, or you shouldn't care about your body, or your body just does this when it ages. 
And so particularly when working with women, I really love to dive into what do they really want? Allow yourself to have it. What's in your soul? What's screaming from your body that I really want to have this, right? Like, I really want to feel confident in my body. I've heard that from women. I really want to have better sex in my relationship. I heard that from women. I really want to find a loving partner or increase the love that my partner gives me. Or I really want to embrace my body at any size and love it along the way to treating it to better health, right? Really allowing you to tap into what you really want now, even before you get to the goal. Allowing yourself to have it, seeing yourself having it, believing that you deserve it and that you can have it and that you will achieve it. This work, my friend, is incredibly powerful. It's actually my favorite strategy for increasing my commitment level. And so I want you to think about your goal for this year or this month or this quarter. What is it? Define where you're at on the commitment level. Are you at level one, not working towards it, denying that you want it? Are you at level two, where you just want it, but you don't want to do any effort? Are you at level three, where you're trying things, but you're just not at that next level where you want to be? Or are you at level four where you're kind of on fire and like, yeah, I really want it. But you notice that you might be beginning to settle and that you're not going after it as hard as you did maybe a couple weeks ago. Or maybe you want to ignite yourself even more to take yourself to level five where it's as good as done. It's yours. It's yours for the having. It's yours for the taking. It's yours to own it, walk in it, feel it, and be it. And then what strategies do you want to take away from this podcast? If you're at one of the levels and you want to go higher, what strategy are you going to implement? Pick one. Pick one and try it. Maybe you want to just dive into your desire and really just feel it in your body of what it's like to obtain it. Maybe you want to look at your goal and say, okay, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I just want to break it down into smaller chunks. Or maybe you want to do a forcing function where you're going to sign up for something. You're going to enroll in something, or you're going to commit to something outside of you that's going to help you commit more internally. And quick shout out about my intermittent fasting program. If you want to do a forcing function, particularly around how you feed yourself and eat healthy and in a meaningful way for your phase in your life, I want to tell you that my intermittent fasting program is starting this Monday. One of the reasons I love intermittent fasting for me at this phase of my life is that it really gives me more energy and brain clarity. And when I've started to follow this type of eating, I notice that I'm able to maintain my weight or lose weight with greater ease. So if you want to be able to understand how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, and why you're eating, because you want to become more metabolically flexible, you want to become healthier, you want to lose weight, you want to banish sugar cravings, then this program will show you how. It's much more than this is when you eat and this is when you don't eat. It's really teaching you the principles around intermittent fasting for women because they are different than for men. Women are not just little men. We are biologically different. We have a different chromosome. (laughs) We are the XX. We have different hormones and we have different supplies of hormones. And our hormones change throughout our life, particularly around perimenopause and menopause, which is a huge transition and which, if not done appropriately, most people, as they go through menopause, will put on 20 pounds of weight. That's what the literature states. And it's because our eating patterns don't change. We continue to eat the same way as we did in our 20s and our 30s, thinking we can have that same body type. But since our hormones change and the way we metabolize food changes, it's really important to understand how your body is working so you can work with your body and not get mad at your body because you're treating it the same way as you did in your 20s and 30s. And that, my friends, is what I'm on a mission to teach people about. Because I've seen obesity firsthand limit people, cause depression, cause anxiety, cause rifts in their relationships and frustrate the heck out of women. And so it's intermittent fasting 45 because it is a 45-day program where you get information on how to learn how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, and why you're eating. 
I'll teach you how to structure your eating, including the timing, the quality of your food, the macros you should be having, and how to stay satisfied and satiated without overeating. And as I mentioned, the reason I continue to do this and follow this as a lifestyle is because it really helps with my energy levels, which go wonky in midlife, and it helps me diminish brain fog and feed my gut microbiome so I'm producing the necessary hormones and transmitters that my body and my brain need to function optimally. So if you want to learn more about IF45 for women, please go to my website, epicu.com, and you will see it on the drop-down menu under the Work With Me tab. All right, my friends, I love that you joined me this week. Please implement some of these strategies into your life and keep going after your health and wellness goals. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Health Habits and Epic Living Podcast. If you're ready to take the next step to improve your health, wellness, and lifestyle goals, head over to www.epicu.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Again, that's E-P-I-C-Y-O-U.com. Please note that the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice.